everybody. I'm Ryan, the Bearded Plumber. Thanks for joining me today. I've got my lovely cup of tea, PG tips, and some cookies, homemade I think. I think they do look, they look homemade. Um, so anyway, I'm on this job and I thought I'd bring you along with me. Behind me there's a Nefit boiler that I've been maintaining for the last few years, I think about three or four years. And new occupiers have moved in. Currently the house has a Nest thermostat. The property is three floors. Yeah, three floors. Um, basement, first floor, and the loft space has three bedrooms and a bathroom. The downstairs have just been renovated and they've got underfloor heating everywhere now. Hence the underfloor heating manifold just behind there. Um, the customer wants to have a more economical, efficient system. So to do that, we're gonna be upgrading all the controls in the house to the Tardo system. Currently there's only a Nest thermostat which I'm gonna which I'm gonna remove and fit the Tardo. All the radio valves are manual valves at the minute, so I've bought along with me TRV bodies, which I'm gonna have to replace on all the radiators so that the Tardo heads can fit on the radiator valves. To split the underfloor heating as a separate circuit, I'm fitting a zone valve. The zone valve will go on this pipework here, but I'll obviously neaten it up a little bit. And the zone valve will go on at the boiler uh, to the underfloor heating circuit so that it will act as one big radiator. And the upstairs will all be individually controllable via the Tardo heads. So yeah, I'm gonna just have a bit more tea, biscuits, and make a start on this. So yeah, stay tuned, and I'll take you along with my whole process of how I drain the radiators, and right now I've currently drained the water from the system via the drain off to the boiler, so the boiler's not under pressure, and the system's not under pressure, but obviously when I go upstairs, I'm gonna bleed the radiators and keep emptying the water and dumping it so that I can get the TRV body fitted to the radiators. And yeah, stay tuned, and I'm gonna take you along with me. Here I am on this one, on this one radiator. Um, basically the radiator here, obviously, as you can see, has a manual valve. And for Tardo to work, it needs a TRV head so that the, the way the Tardo works is basically the Tardo sits on the threaded bit here. This is a M30 1.5 and the Tardo motor will basically press on this needle. So obviously if there's a manual valve, as you can see here right now, there's nowhere to fit the Tardo head. So therefore TRV needs to go in. So downstairs, I've drained the system down already. And up here, I'm gonna now remove the ready to valve. And to do that, I'm gonna first of all, open up the bleed vent on this side. It's got one of these automatic bleed vents, which I don't know if they work too well, but let's open it up to bleed that. And there you go, it's now releasing the pressure as you can hear. So that's that bit done. And there we have it. So first of all, we remove the radiator valve, like so. I've brought along with me olive cutters, although this is not actually an olive. It ain't gonna be able to cut that because it's some thick gauge brass. So instead, I'm just gonna pull it off, like so. There you go. So as you can see, the olive, this is a lot thicker than an olive. Um, there you go, it's in focus. So you can see it's a real thick gauge and olive cutters is not gonna cut this. As you can see, it's even got a lip inside it. So this is the kind of things I gotta deal with here in Holland that you have different types of radiator valves, different type of olives. It's just not as straightforward as one would expect when you're doing work in a country that you don't, that you didn't train in. And now using my monument ratchet rad tail remover, I'm just gonna remove this. PTFE tape up the 
new half inch rad valve tail. I don't know about you guys, but I give it roughly about anything between 12 to 15 turns of PTFE tape. And I know a lot of you guys are using liquid PTFE these days, but what I don't like about it is that you gotta, you gotta wait and let it set before you can do any other work. So therefore I'm just gonna use, carry on using PTFE tape. Tail in, TRV head, or body, sorry. TRV body on. And there we have it, my friends. That is how to install a TRV body to a radiator so that you can fit Tardo to your radiators. Now, I'm going to carry on doing the other ones up in the bedrooms, but the kids are in the other rooms where they're studying because obviously homeschooling right now, so I'm not going to film in there. But you've seen me do one, so it's pretty self explanatory. The other ones in the other rooms are going to be just the same. All the radiator valves have been changed. I've put on TRV bodies on every single radiator upstairs. So there was, I believe, there's four, four, and four, I think eight. Eight in total, I've just got it done. Um, now I'm gonna cut down here and put the zone valve. And yeah, I'm gonna bring you a bit more closer to this. And yeah, um, get the zone valve going. And uh, then we gotta just set the whole Tardo system up, program it, and I will show you how I do that. Well, I will try my best to show how I program the Tardo. But yeah, I'll get you more closer to the underfloor heating system. Uh, just gonna follow this back. This is the return and this is the flow. Flow, just making sure. And that's why this one goes this way. Yep, flow. Okay, so we're on the flow over here. They've used plastic pipe. So I'm gonna just put the zone valve, I think there is best. And yeah, quick shout out to Unilight again. So here's the HX. 800R that I'm going to use to light this up so that you get a better view. There you go, magnetic, light on. Probably a bit too intense actually. Let's, I think that's about, that's about right. Yep, that's enough light. So here's the zone valve. So somehow I need to get this on here now. Um, in that direction, and the worst part is that it's it's plastic pipe that they've used, so I need to adapt. Yeah, that's the best thing to do is to adapt this. Where do we start? What we do is first of all down here is a drain off. Nah, that hose pipe can stay. I've got my own hose, hose pipe here. Screw that on to the drain off. And, well, I suppose actually, yeah. If I isolate that and I isolate that, I'm pretty certain that the underfloor heating is isolated. So he says. And I'm going to cut it. Let's just see what happens. Do I get Niagara Falls when I cut it? Remove this out of the way. Get your buckets ready, just in case. Worst case scenario, and towel. So, let's cut. Oh, it's not too bad, there you go. Not too bad. Yep, bit of water, which we can handle. I can go into the bucket like so. And done. There you go. So again, it's all about planning and knowing how the system works so that you don't have accidents. Um, 
and right now I just want to tighten that like so. And this I can hold like so. I figure out which direction. Oh no. Yes, there you go. So I'm going to remove this and make it all metal just so that I can then reduce, put a reducer inside here from 22 to 15 inside the actual where the olives go and that way it's a neater job so that's that part done great so half inch to 15 mil Okay, so that goes there, like so. Brilliant. Tighten that up. Okay, we have good there. So here, as you know, there is 22 mil olive inside the zone valve. So what I'm going to do. Basically, I love these. So you've got this bush, fits in there. Olive goes inside, so olive goes there. Then a cap on top of that. So that goes on there, like so. And then your nut goes back over it. And now you've got an internal 15 millimeter reducer in a 22 mil fitting. I absolutely love this method. So there you go, that goes there. The head to the side and the zone valve, like so, because that looks neater. To me anyway bend that just there and then in this part of the zone valve again same 22 mil to 15 mil reducer that goes in there like so onto here screw that on Make it tight. Like so, like so. Olive into there. That goes like that. And that tightens there. And that is brilliant. Just how I want it. We'll now cut this just there using, I don't know what they call it in English, but here they call it a calibrator. This thing here to put it into a 16 mil pipe and make it a little bit loose. So yeah, I don't know what it's called in English. I never use it in the UK. And so basically you get, let me show you actually. So obviously, as you know, here's a standard 15 mil nut and olive that would go in a compression joint. But here, what we use is to go from 16 mil MLCP, bendy, and then to go to 16 mil MLCP, we get this bush, uh, there was this um, nut, that's 16 mil there. And then this reducing olive 
lookalike thing goes in that way and then this bush basically inserts into the 16 mil pipe like so and you put it into the fitting and the rubber seals all get hard you know tighten against the rubber seals and it's watertight that's how i go to metal from mlcp you can buy fittings that you can obviously press but i like to use compression just because you never know when you may need to open the open it up again and this way it's sort of like you know gives you options that's tight in there let's get grips on the top over here and give that a couple of turns right and there we have it with hardly any water spillage and mess that's that done so just to recap all the radiator valves have now got tardo on it except one which is in a closet um, which is going to act as a bypass and because that closet it doesn't really it's not a usable room and the customer's happy to use that as a bypass because the little bypasses you fit under the boiler and stuff i personally don't like when you got when you got full electronic radiator valves such as tardo um, or honey or evo home i always prefer a radiator to be a bypass because there's more flow of water through it and there's this reduces the chance of overheating of the boiler so zone valves fitted all the radiator valves have been fitted and now we've got to just wire it up um, so uh, uh, now need to first of all start by plugging in the Tado bridge into the back of the router so this basically should so he says slide off like so find a free port which this one has that goes in there and then hang that back up for the customer and that's back on there and now we need power for this there's an extension lead here but the usb cable is very short that came with it so therefore luckily i've got one that's char keeping my camera charged which i can use and plug in instead and that resolves that so once it goes in okay that's in and that just from behind there so it's always best to whilst you're setting everything up get the bridge connected because sometimes this can take a while and now you can see the lights are flashing and once these three lights all go solid like now oh okay there you go now that is connected to the internet once it's connected to the internet you can start configuring the system up this is actually a learning curve for me because normally i would use an extension unit and this time when i purchased this kit um i ordered a wireless system which i had never done before and i thought it was the same thing but it actually isn't so basically there that is a wireless receiver hence why it's got wireless receiver written on it and it actually comes with a wireless thermostat and the difference is that this thermostat unlike the v3 has no wiring connections so it actually is just a temperature sensor so it's like you know a wireless nest or a wireless honeywell t6r that i fit that's what this is but i need to trigger my zone valve so therefore it needs to be wired so the way i've done it is i've got a permanent live going into this box 
and the light the neutral from the permanent neutral to the neutral in the zone valve has been looped earth has been looped i'm not using the orange and the gray cable in the zone valve because it doesn't need it for the system and the brown from the zone valve goes to the normally open and the permanent brown permanent live from the socket from the main power goes to the common inside the wiring of this so if i pull it open i can show you like so so we've got brown to normally open and the gray permanent live common so this obviously because of the learning curve i haven't put it up yet but now that i have actually put it through its paces and tested it all out it's definitely working and so now i will actually put it up against the wall so and then i'm going to try something even more different and see if i can configure it that the wireless temperature sensor that i have here if i can put this in a different room and actually use this to trigger the boiler or trigger the underfloor heating. So this talks to this and then this talks to the wireless receiver. That's something I wanna try and see if it works and get back to you on that one. But for now, this works. I've tested it and it's 100% working. So just to show you it in action. So the Tardo, is on um, what we can do is press the button 14 degrees right now I'll increase the temperature to let's say 20 it will flash and what you will see it flashing and you'll see the third LED will come on on the wireless receiver any second now there you go on boiler now has a radiator on it it's got a signal to fire up zone valve has opened up and gone free and there you go underflow heating working all done now just to turn off the underflow heating because we don't need it so I'll just reduce the temperature down to seven degrees. It's gonna take a couple of minutes for the contact to open up, zone valve to go back to rest position and turn off the boiler demand as well. So that's that done. And now I'll show you how to configure a Tardo head. Basically the way you do this is, you have to do it all in the app what I'll do is I will actually do a video later on actually showing you how I do it on the phone um, but for now you can just watch me do it because I haven't got the camera set up that way but the first thing you must always do is make sure that the internet bridge is connected so I first of all plug the internet bridge at once that was in the router I made sure that all three lights were turned on once the three lights were turned on, it was connected to the internet. I then wired up the wireless receiver, powered it up, and wired in the thermostat for the underfloor heating. I then made sure that the via the app, I activated pairing for the bridge. Once that's activated, I then press the button on the wireless receiver, let that connect first. Once that was connected and all good, I then paired up the room thermostat. And once that's connected, then you know that it's all working, the system's working. And then I do the radiator valves. That's the order of process of how I do it. So in the app, you basically have to choose what you're doing next. So I want to install a head. Click on the thermostat head. And then it says start registering. It gives you a QR code reader. On the thermostat itself, it has a QR code. Basically, you scan it, and then it'll just say register. You register that, and then it tells you to remove the battery, the, the cover from the battery. 
remove that. It will then say hi. Press next. Just follow the instructions as it is on the phone. Press the pairing button underneath and then you get Knight Rider style three lights flashing across the head. This can take up to two minutes for it to connect to the bridge. Once this is connected, you then basically follow the instructions and you put the thermostatic head onto each radiator. Um, yeah, so obviously on this property is about eight radiators, so it can be a bit longer. That's just the name of the game and how the cookie crumbles. So you, so you just have to be patient. As you can see, three lights means it's connected. Once that's connected, it will tell your phone. Now that it's paired, you just follow the instructions on the phone, keep going next, 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 and then now I need to go and mount it onto the radiator. This head is all paired to the internet. So basically, I've already connected the adapter to the TRV head. Once that's in place, you lock it, and then you will see the three circles appear. Once that's done, there you go. The full three circles means it's now calibrated, fitted to the radiator, that is done. And that's how you do a Tardo on a radiator. All done. Um, it worked out really well. So just to show you, I still need to neaten up a little bit, but all the heads are on, everything's working. So just to show you guys it in action, there is my phone. So the bathroom one is the only one that's sort of a decent temperature. So if I click on the bathroom, click there, I increase the temperature to 25, press this one here to accept. There you go, so that's going there. That's accepted it. And now you will see that light has come on. And now the boiler has also fired up on heating mode. So it's safe to say the system is done. And uh, I'm genuinely chuffed because this wireless receiver is the first time I ever fitted one. Um, it was a great experiment, it worked out well. And uh, onwards and upwards guys, I want to clean up, tidy up my, my stuff and neaten up the cabling a little bit. But thanks for watching this. And like I said, I will do videos on how to set up a Tardo system uh, with the camera set up properly in my little bearded cubby hole I have at the back of my house in my little shed. Um, how to wire up a Honeywell system, the T6 and the T6R, the Nest, the Nest E, and also the Tardo system um, using the extension kit and the wireless kit that I've used today just so you can see the different ways of doing it but uh, yeah if you have any questions or queries you know please feel free to leave them in the comments below I will get back to you and until next time live long and prosper and I will see you in the next video thanks for watching over and out